Both the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization are now recommending the use of masks for the general public. Yet earlier in the pandemic, the advice was that masks were not needed. These shifting guidelines have led to much confusion among the general public about the utility of masks, but have also paved the way for some wild and wacky claims from true conspiracy theorists to those that believe that it is a personal liberty or human rights violation, to those that just simply believe that they are above the law. So let's look at the science. Right now, health experts worldwide say that the evidence is clear. Masks can help prevent the spread of COVID-19, and the more people wearing masks, the better. Back in March 2020, when the pandemic first started, there were a lot more unknowns. Globally, there was a limited supply of masks and the understanding that they should be reserved for our frontline healthcare workers who are in constant contact with infected individuals. The root of viral transmission was relatively unknown, and there were fears of complacency with other rules if people were wearing masks, but there is no evidence supporting this thus far. And it was obvious that a large-scale public health intervention for mandated mask use in everyday practice would require a huge cultural and behavioural shift. As our understanding of disease prevalence increased, it became more evident that both pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic transmission were possible, meaning that even if a person displays no physical signs of disease, they could still have it. Symptoms take on average five days, and in some cases up to 14 days to manifest. This makes it really difficult in terms of knowing when to self-isolate to protect others, especially when you are not aware that you have the disease, let alone being infectious. Studies have found that viral load, that is the amount of virus present once a person has been infected, and the virus has had time to replicate in their cells, peaks days before physical symptoms begin to show. COVID-19 has an unusually high level of viral particles in the upper respiratory tract, especially in the nose and mouth. And viral shedding is when those particles escape into the environment. And this is how we believe the virus is currently spreading so rapidly. So what studies have now found is that when simply speaking, we disperse hundreds of droplets from our mouths, and that this is enough to expel virus-carrying droplets into the atmosphere. Both coughing and sneezing expel even more viral droplets, respectively. And we now know that these particles can travel up to six feet, hence the physical distancing rules. These particles are expelled as large droplets that evaporate over distance and form smaller particles known as aerosols. These particles can travel farther and stay suspended in the air for on average three hours, moving along with airflow patterns. They can also land on surfaces, and these are known as fomites. So basically anyone and any surface could be a source of transmission. And the best way to reduce this transmission is masks that minimize not so much the inhalation of those particles, but the exhalation. So this is an act of source control to prevent the infected person from projecting the virus into the air around them. Thus any covering of the nose and mouth is helpful to reduce the spread of a potentially infected individual. However, not all masks are created equal. There has been lots of debate around which types of masks are most appropriate. Recent laboratory studies have tested the ability of different types of masks to block respiratory droplets and aerosols. Experiments using high-speed video and advanced LED lighting have demonstrated the differences in droplet dispersion using no mask, a one-layered cloth mask, a two-layered covering, and a surgical mask. The researchers found that many of these dispersions were blocked when a mouth covering of some form was used. A three-layered surgical mask was significantly better than either a one or two-layered cloth mask. The current recommendations for homemade masks are that it should be at least three layers of thickness, tightly woven, and a cotton or cotton mixed material to provide better filtration systems. So what's the difference between the N95 mask, the surgical mask, and the homemade mask? The N95 mask, or respirators, get their name because these masks are supposed to filter out 95% of particles, and they are tightly fitted around your face. 
They are effective in part because they have electrically charged fibers that attract and capture airborne virus carrying particles. They get stuck and filtered out and cannot pass through. In contrast, a surgical mask works in three layers. An inner water absorbent layer that catches any dispersions, a middle layer that acts as a filter, and an outer layer which is generally a water resistant fabric and prevents large droplets from attaching to its surface. The way the filters are weaved together in these masks make the motion part through them very difficult for these particles. Surgical masks are primarily designed to protect the environment from the wearer, whereas respirators are supposed to protect the wearer from the environment. There are also some N95 mask whip valves. These are not recommended. While the wearer breathes in filtered air, unfiltered air is pushed out upon exhalation, and this negates protection of others if you are contagious. To demonstrate real-world examples of mask utility, here is some anecdotal evidence. In one case, a passenger flew from China to Toronto and subsequently tested positive for COVID-19. He had a cough and wore a mask on the flight, and all 25 people closest to him on the flight tested negative. In another case, two hairstylists had close contact with 140 clients while sick with COVID-19. All clients were wearing masks and none of them tested positive. Another study found that the growth rate of coronavirus slowed down after masks were introduced as compulsory in 15 US states. And finally, a study that examined coronavirus deaths in 198 countries found that cultural norms and government policies favoring mask wearing had lower death rates. So there's a lot of real-time evidence that demonstrates the utility of masks. COVID-19 is an invisible enemy. It doesn't discriminate. So please, if you can, if you are able, wear a mask. Remember the three W's. Wear a mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. Want to do a simple experiment to check whether your mask is effective? Here's a good litmus test. Put it on and try blowing out a flame. If you can't, then you know your mask works.